Hello and welcome to the Clan Phase. My name is Mark and thank you so much for joining me. I, like many, woke up to some seriously exciting reveals from the Warhammer World Championships for 40k alongside which armies are coming next summer. Loads of amazing models to get through, so without any further ado, let's get stuck in. First up, we have to talk about the new Dark Angel sculpts ahead of their upcoming Codex release. And first up is the brand spanking new Master of Repentance, Asmodai, who had a serious glow up. He keeps the smoky effect from the original, which is a nice touch, although thankfully for me, you don't need to have this. He has a smokeless backpack if you prefer, and either a hooded or halo head option too. I really like the fact there is a fallen helmet on his base. Really nice added touch there. I've really been a fan of what Games Workshop are doing with updating models for the Dark Angels range, and the Deathwing Knights are no exception to this. These were also shown to us from what I can only imagine was in response to the leaks we had online, similar to when we had the Potato Camp Angron appear in the last edition. But even without a big video to show them off, Games Workshop have done a great job of bringing some iconic models from that faction up to the new Terminator level we saw for the Marines. You'll get plenty of options in the kit from giving more swords or maces, alongside hooded or helmeted options depending on the aesthetic you're going for. Plus the teleport homer and the most important model in the kit, the Watcher in the Dark. The only criticism I have for this kit compared to the old one is the maces. These look far less medieval knights and more just like power battens. Do let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this. Another one of the fine cast models from the Necron range gets a glow up in the form of Orican the Diviner. This cantankerous cryptek receives the new Necron update to his older, tired model and looks fantastic. When the new Necrons were released at the start of 9th edition, I loved where Games Workshop went with it and each new model continues to knock it out of the park. The posing is very similar to the old one, but I'm guessing now floating above the tactical rock rather than standing on it, holding the improved staff and trusty Rubik's Cube. Even that detail looks amazing. I'm sure players will be very glad to see the back of the old Finecast one and grab this guy as soon as he comes out. This comes as Orican is just one of the characters set to appear in the next narrative supplement, Crusade Pariah Nexus, where the Silent King is redoubling his efforts as the Indomitus Crusade pushes legions of guardsmen, battle sisters and space marines into its disquieting depths. The portents of an upcoming catastrophe are so dire that Orican declines an audience with Sarek, and the Silent King's former astrologer doesn't need to wait long before the first flickers of the apocalyptic flame appear. The Adeptus Mechanicus, led by Belisarius Call, have brought some of their most fearsome technological relics to the Pariah Nexus, and an all-out maelstrom of unrestrained destruction is sure to follow. Like Crusade Tyrannic War before it, this new expansion for Warhammer 40,000 contains loads of content for your narrative Crusade campaigns, challenging your armies with 15 new missions and unboxing a treasure trove of upgrades as they score victories against their rivals. For me, the most exciting reveal from this weekend was the new Night Lords kill team. Even amongst their vicious and sadistic brothers, the Night Lords Nemesis Claws kill teams are brutal, unhinged murderers who commit the darkest atrocities for fun. Draping themselves in the flayed skins of their victims and eking out every drop of fear and pain from those unfortunate enough to face them. The enhanced and larger upgrade sprue builds upon the Chaos Space Marine Legionaries kit as a base to really flesh out the incredible look and feel of the Night Lords, giving you plenty of fitting weaponry and macabre trinkets from drape skins and trophies to the iconic winged helmets and flensing blades, plus enough shoulder pads for the entire squad. I absolutely love what has been done here to make this warband. They look exactly how I imagined they would be and honestly, I'll be grabbing one of these just to paint up. They've also mentioned a new war gear piece for the Nemesis Claws team with the Ventrilocar Icon Bearer, who carries a sorcerous totem built upon the ruined corpse of a murdered space marine. His corrupted puppet can mimic the voices of anyone whose flesh it consumes. Now that is a pretty cool party trick. For me, this is really exciting. For all the Night Lords players out there, having upgrade options available to really make the army feel more like the Legion is fantastic, and I can only imagine these are going to fly off the shelves. 
The other really exciting part is that hopefully we'll see this happening for other legions, like the word bearers and iron warriors as well, similar to that of the loyalist marine chapters to push the looks of your forces should you wish to. I'll be keeping my fingers crossed that that is the case, as more options here would be incredible for Chaos players. Last of all, you received an update to the Codex roadmap for 40k, adding in the Gene Stealer Cult and Adeptus Sororitas as the two summer Codex releases, alongside one which has been redacted. Could this be the heavily rumoured Emperor's Children release, or a Games Workshop just teasing us here to keep us on our toes, and it will be one of the existing forces? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section about that below. The good thing for Gene Stealer and Sisters players is that the Codex isn't too far away and will give us some more army building options. As a Sisters player, hopefully an aspect of the Bloody Rose does make a return. So there we have the 40k reveals from the World Championships and I must admit this one excited me far more than the last 40th anniversary reveal show. One model I do have to mention which is off topic and that is the Tomb Kings of Khemri Overlord on Necrolith Bone Dragon. My word does this look incredible. It's an army I always wanted as a kid being a huge fan of ancient Egypt so might this be the time I jump in? I mean I really don't need another army but... Shut up and take my money! Let me know in the comment section below what you made of the reveals. Was there something that really stood out to you and excited for? I'd love to know. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps the channel to grow. We're closing in on 1,000 subscribers, which would be an incredible achievement and hopefully it's something we can reach by Christmas. Thank you all so much for watching the command phase and I'll see you in the next video.